Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. Do you know what one of the number one causes of bad 3D prints is? It's wet filament, moisture in your filament. You don't want moist filament, okay? And the best way to get rid of it is to dry it. What do you dry it with? Sometimes you can stick it in an oven and hope that your roommate doesn't come in and preheat the oven and then melt everything. I've heard of that happening. Or you can stick it in, um, no, that's pretty much it. But you know what's a better way than that? Is a dedicated filament dryer. And that's why today we're taking a look at the Sovol 3D Dual 3D Filament Dryer. Disclaimer, wait, no, bottom line. Yes, it's good. It's around $50, which is one of the cheapest ones out there. And you can put in two rolls of filament up to 70 millimeters uh, wide, which is pretty cool. Okay, that's the bottom line. So if I think you should buy one, I mean, yeah, if you're in the market for one, definitely check this one out. I'll have links down in the description below. Disclaimer, Soval did send this to me. Uh, they didn't pay me to do this, but I get to keep this one now, so thanks, Soval. Um, and I did a little test with it, because I was like, you know, I want to see if it's any good. Um, and it is. I mean, it's a pretty simple item. It basically heats up and then blows air, and so how can you screw that up, right? Well, um, probably there's probably some way, but this one seems to be pretty good. So I did a little test. Let me walk you through that. All right, so now that you have the bottom line for this baby right here, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by my friends over at PCB Way. They've been helping out the channel a lot, and I really appreciate that because nobody else seems to want to sponsor this channel for some reason, and I'd really love to be able to get away from the YouTube ads and stuff, and I'm sure you would as well. If you're working on an electronics project and you need some custom printed circuit boards, definitely check out PCBWay.com. They have all kinds of components available in, in addition to custom printed circuit boards, and they can even take those components and assemble the entire circuit board for you to give you like a finished product and they can get it to you wicked fast at least that's what I'm told they also offer rapid prototyping services like 3d printing CNC machining sheet metal and injection molding check them out if you're working on a cool project and you need some rapid prototyping services let them know that I sent you just to make me feel good the link down in the description pcbway.com thanks let's go to test the effectiveness of this filament dryer, I had to get some wet filament. But before I did that, I took two rolls that I decided I was going to test with, the white uh, cheap PLA that like, came with a, one of my printers, and the uh, blue filament here, which is uh, 3D Fuel Pro PLA, one of my favorite brands. And I did a test print uh, just under normal storage conditions. And so I usually store these in a sealable five gallon bucket with some silica in there. And then I printed a little test print to see how it would do. I decided to use an all-in-one flight controller board um, adapter. And the reason for that is because it has these posts uh, that stick up. And typically when you have posts like that or some sort of protrusions and the printer has to go from one and then to the other and then the other and then the other, um, you have a lot of stringing. And uh, stringing is especially bad with filament that has a lot of moisture in it. And typically the more moisture it has, the worse it is. And also you get um, weaker prints generally. I did the test with regular storage conditions. You know, it came out okay. That's basically how it would have ended up um, just normally. And then I took my filament and I just chucked it out in the rain because it was raining, so that was cool. So I just left it out there like all day very high humidity. I can't remember how high it was, but it was high and it was raining. Uh, it definitely got wet. Very bad conditions. Like, don't store your filament outside and always bring it in when you're done playing with it, okay? <laughs> when I took it inside, I let it dry out just, or not really dry out, but like there wasn't moisture, visible moisture on it. Um, and it just kind of sat there overnight. Uh, and then the next day I printed test prints and we can see what those looked like. Pretty bad, quite a bit more stringing. Uh, for both of the filaments and I think the white filament is a bit worse because it's lower quality anyway um, So that wasn't very good now It's time to pop these babies in this magical box and dry them out the first day I did about five hours I think and then I turned it off because I was going to sleep and I didn't want that humming sound There's a bit of a hum, but we'll talk about that in just a moment and then the next day I did about Oh, it's been going for about 16 hours, and we've gotten down to 10% humidity. 
That's uh, that's the lowest that I've seen it actually. So in total, we dried this out about for about 24 hours. By the end of the drying process, when I actually decided to do the next test print, the moisture level or the humidity level in the box was down to about 8% humidity. Wowzers, that's the lowest that it's been so far. And then I took the filament out of the box and did some test prints. And as you can see, they turned out way better than they had when they were wet. So what does that tell us? That tells us that this thing definitely works well to save your filament. And like, that's really bad conditions to be leaving it out in the rain. Like I would kind of think like, oh man, it's done for. Um, or maybe if you get a shipment of filament and it wasn't properly sealed, you know, it was getting a bunch of moisture during shipment and then you get it and it's like, you know, trash. And you're like, dang it, man, I just spent the money on this filament. What am I gonna do? You know, stick it in my oven and then have somebody come by and like melt it because they're making brownies and then they didn't check what was in the oven or something. I don't know. No, I mean, no, I'm not gonna do that. That's a bad idea. So as far as I can tell, those results are pretty concrete, not an extensive test by any means, but it definitely shows that this thing works to dry your filament out and you'll get way better prints with drier filament. And this is especially useful for uh, flexible filaments like TPU. My understanding is TPU filaments are much more hydroscopic, meaning they absorb moisture uh, even more than uh, PLA filament. That's what, if I'm wrong, don't tell me. But if I'm right, let me know, leave me a comment down below. Yeah. Here I am unboxing it. You can see that it came in a box and I'm taking it out of a box. It was pretty well packaged with a lot of foam, maybe actually too much foam, I would say. It does come with its own power supply, so that's great. Now turning it on, there is a little bit of a hum. Um, it's not as loud as like a, a 3D printer uh, fan, like my uh, Focus Odin 5. The stepper motors and everything are very quiet, but the fans are still pretty loud but this thing is definitely not as loud as the printer itself. It's like maybe like as loud as like a computer fan. Oh yeah, much louder if we open this up. I'm not sure if you can hear that. One of the features of this box is that you can print while the filament is drying by uh, unplugging these little holes in the top and running the filament through there. Um, that is cool. That's nice. I, but I really wish that they had put holes like on the bottom of this thing or maybe out the front as well. Uh, and the reason for that is like if, if the holes were on the bottom, I could put this thing on a shelf above my uh, 3D printer, especially a direct drive printer, and just have the filament come in right out. Um, but as it is on the top, you're, you, ha you basically have to go up and over uh, your 3D printer. So I'll have to come up with some sort of like pulley system to kind of run the filament over the top of my printer and down into the direct drive. This might work a bit better if you have a Bowden style um, 3D printer, like an Ender 3. Uh, but still, I would like to see some other options than just the holes on the top. But I do like that they put the thought into that, so you at least have that option there, and they do have the little rubber plug, so that is nice. On the back of it, we have the port for the power supply, and it also has a rubber plug, and that's so that you can use this as a storage box for your filament and keep all the moisture out. Now, the thing is, when we undo these latches, I'm not super convinced about the, the positive seal around the, the around this lid like the rubber seems the rubber seems fine like it's nice and squishy but i'm just not convinced it's making like a really solid contact maybe it's enough but uh personally i'll be storing my filament uh in the sealed five gallon buckets with the silica but then you know periodically or maybe if i'm doing a long print i'll just put them in this uh, dryer box and then like actually dry them out that way but i don't think i'll use this for actual storage. It does have rollers that the filament rolls right on, but I wasn't super impressed with them. They didn't like spin. I mean, they spun freely, but they weren't like super smooth. You know what I'm saying? Like they weren't, they didn't feel like ball bearing smooth. Um, but they do seem sufficient, I would say. That's not, that's not too bad. 
When I was first testing this out, I tried using a 3D Fuel filament roll, and this particular roll, this is black Pro PLA. For some reason, this particular roll of filament was kind of like extra wide. It was, a, it was a few millimeters too wide. This piece right here sticks out, and I think it sticks out more than it should. See what I'm saying? To fit on this uh, one side of the track on the dryer. But as it turns out, most of the other 3D fuel filament rolls are actually about, what are they, 70 millimeters? I don't know, but they fit just fine. You can have two full size rolls in here, um, or you can certainly have, you probably do three of these little ones. I don't know, but you can definitely have another one, a uh, small one in there as well. Way to do it because your 3D printer, and then if they say to leave a, leave it open a little bit. So I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take these two latches and I guess just leave them like that. The operation of this is pretty simple. Uh, you basically just turn it on and then you can go into the mode section and set your temperature from 40, 45 or, uh, or excuse me, yeah, 40, 45 or 50 degrees Celsius. And then you can press that mode feature again and then set how long you want it to uh, uh, dry for either uh, six to 12 hours. And then you just uh, press it again and then it will just start up and it'll just run and then it'll shut off when it's done. So very, very simple. And it gives you a countdown for uh, how many uh, hours are left in the dry drying cycle. And then it gives you your humidity level as well. All right, I think I talked about all the things and said all the words. And at this point, you probably know whether you want to get one of these or not. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in that section below where you can type things. Keep on creating and printing and doing cool stuff. And I will see you again very soon. Soval, 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 Soval. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry. But that's kind of how it is. And when you have a name like that. Oh boy. All right. That should work pretty well. Hey everybody. Welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam. And yes, I didn't have any idea of what I was going to say after that. Okay. Let's try that again. We'll get, I mean, we get bars, we get our goggles.